So how is a threat detected? Well, there are these pattern recognition receptors, PRRs, that can recognize infectious agents. And what they recognize on the infectious pathogen are structures that are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or PAMPs, P-A-M-P. Also, pattern recognition receptors, as well as recognizing PAMPs on foreign infectious agents, can recognize structures associated with damage to our own body cells. And we call these structures damage-associated molecular patterns. So pattern recognition receptors can recognize both PAMPs and DAMPs. And these can be present on the cell surface or sometimes inside cells. And these may be on pathogen cells or they may be on our own body cells. What is important to appreciate is that although this recognition is often described as being broadly specific, what is actually being recognized is recognized in a very, very highly specific way. So for example, we'll mention a few uh, pathogen-associated molecular patterns in a few moments. One of them is called lipopolysaccharide, or LPS. LPS is found on gram-negative bacteria. Now, lots of different types of gram-negative bacteria. So LPS is shared between several different bacteria but the recognition of LPS is very, very highly specific. So recognition is structurally specific, but what is recognized is common to whole groups of organisms or host cells. These pattern recognition receptors can be inside cells, in other words, intracellular. And if they're intracellular, if they're inside a cell, they may be present on the endosomes within the cell, or they may be present within the cytosol of the cell. Alternatively, they may be present on the surface of cells, cell surface pattern recognition receptors. Or indeed, they may be released or secreted from cells as soluble pattern recognition receptors. You can now look at a number of different pattern recognition receptors and the PAMPs that they recognize. Let's start with endosomal pattern recognition receptors. There is a group of 10 or so pattern recognition receptors that are called toll-like receptors. A couple of examples for you now. TLR3, toll-like receptor, recognizes the PAMP viral double-stranded RNA. TLR7 and TLR8 recognize viral single-stranded RNA, whereas TLR9 recognizes a particular nucleotide sequence within the DNA of bacteria called bacterial unmethylated CPG. Let's now turn to cytosolic pattern recognition receptors. Nod1, nucleotide binding oligomerization domain containing protein 1, and Nod2. These recognize bacterial peptidoglycans. These structures are found on gram-positive bacteria. So again, shared between many different bacteria, but the recognition of peptidoglycan by Nod1 and Nod2 is highly specific for that particular structure. Rig1, retinoic acid inducible gene 1 recognizes viral double-stranded RNA. And as a third example of a cytosolic pattern recognition receptor, NLRP3, nod-like receptor family pyrin domain containing 3, which is part of the inflammasome, which we'll discuss in a few seconds. This recognizes bacterial lipopolysaccharide, LPS, cell surface pattern recognition receptors, TLR2, Again, recognizes bacterial structures that are shared between many different bacterial species, various bacterial lipopeptides, and lipoproteins. TLR4 recognizes bacterial lipopolysaccharide, LPS. And TLR5 
recognises bacterial for the gel in. And finally, soluble pattern recognition receptors. Mannose binding lectin that recognises the sugar mannose, as its name suggests, and fecalin, which recognises N-acetylglucosamine, another sugar. Let's now turn to pattern recognition receptors which recognise DAMPs, damage-associated molecular patterns, or sometimes called danger-associated molecular patterns. These are pattern recognition receptors that recognise structures produced by our own body cells following damage. A couple of examples of pattern recognition receptors present on cell surfaces that recognise damps. RAGE, the receptor for advanced glycation end products, as its name suggests, recognises advanced glycation end products that are produced by our own cells in response to damage. And RAGE, TLR2 and TLR4, recognise HMGB1, high mobility group box 1. So if you were paying attention, you will see that RAGE recognises two different damps, advanced glycation end products and HMGB1, whereas TLR2 and TLR4 are specific not for advanced glycation end products, but for HMGB1. And then finally, cytosolic pattern recognition receptors involved with a structure called the inflammasome. NLRP3 recognizes the damage or danger associated molecular pattern, uric acid. 